Hello, and welcome to Aerotech's Automation One Motion Control Platform Educational Series. Aerotech is a company that solves your toughest precision motion and automation challenges. Automation One is a motion control platform consisting of software based controls and development tools, PC and drive based control hardware, and hardware based drives for servo motors and other devices. In this video, you will discover what the camming and gearing features in Automation One are and how they function. My name is Alex, and I'm a control system specialist for Aerotech. All right, so let's jump in and look at what the camming and gearing functions are. On their surface, these features are simply used to synchronize one or more follower axes to a leader axis. So as your leader axis moves, your follower axis will, well, follow. First is camming. Camming is a method that utilizes a predefined set of coordinates specified in what we refer to as a cam table. In other words, you specify a specific position or velocity of your follower axes for a given position of your leader axis. Gearing, on the other hand, creates a strictly proportional relationship between two axes without the need of a table. Basically, for every fixed number of encoder counts the leader makes, the follower will make as well. Let's first look more in-depthly at camming. Like we mentioned, camming uses a predefined set of coordinates specified in our cam table to change the position or velocity of your follower axes based on the position of your leader axis. That is what we are effectively seeing here in our image. In our cam table, we had specified a nonlinear set of follower axis positions. So what we are seeing in our image is that as our leader axis, or also known as the master axis, moves, then our follower axis moves to an appropriate point based on what we specified in our table. And that is what is giving our follower axis this snake-like appearance. Now, in between each cam table point, the controller actually uses a user-specified interpolation mode to smoothly go in between each of these follower points. The main point here is that camming does not need to use a strictly linear relationship between two axes. However, you are limited by the fact that a specific cam table is required for these different points. Now, gearing, on the other hand, like we mentioned, creates and maintains a continuously proportional relationship between your follower axis and your leader axis based on a fixed ratio. So as your leader axis moves, your follower axis will move by a proportional amount. And this happens at the encoder count level. So if you set your relationship to a one-to-one -one ratio, for every one encoder count the leader makes, the follower axis will also make a one encoder count move. Same for something like a one-to-ten ratio. In something like that, then you should see a scenario where for every one encoder count that your leader makes, your follower axis will move 10 encoder counts. This is something similar to what we can see in our image here. Gearing should then just be as simple as that. As one axis moves, the other axis should move a proportional amount. So just to recap, the big difference between camming and gearing is that camming requires the use of a cam table. In other words, a predefined set of points to determine how the follower axis should move. Gearing, on the other hand, will just move the follower axis a proportional amount based on the ratio between the leader and the follower axis. So now what are some of the limitations of these features or just other tidbits of information that you should know about camming and gearing? Well, to begin, there are certain features like the acceleration limiting, such as coordinated excel limit, that just don't apply with camming and gearing functions. Additionally, there are a couple different scenarios and situations that will stop this relationship between a follower axis and your leader axis. These include outright disabling the function, using the abort function, disabling the follower axis, or generating an axis fault on the follower axis based on the fault mask disable or fault mask to cell parameters. Another piece of information is that you cannot configure camming and gearing between two axes that use differing position update rates. All servo axes use a 20 kHz position update rate. This is standard on your Automation 1 drives, such as an XC4 or IXC2E, like we will use in our demonstration kits. All Galvo controllers, on the other hand, use a 100 kHz update rate, which as of right now is the only major contender when it comes to offering differing Automation 1 position update rates. Basically what that means is that as long as the leader and follower axes are both either servo axes or both either Galvo axes, then you can link the two together. All right, so now let's move over to testing and demonstrating the cam and gearing functions so we can really flesh these features out. So let's first start with camming. So for our camming example, we're going to be using the help file example program that we provide. So let's go ahead and modify this for our demo kit. Now, the first thing we're going to do and show you is where do we load the cam table with? Where are those values at? 
and those are specified as an array right here. So since we are using our 50 millimeter linear stage, we're going to be telling the leader axis every 10 millimeters up to 50, how often do we want a new point in the cam table to move our follower axis? So we're going to be telling the leader axis to move every 10 millimeters, and every 10 of those millimeters, the follower axis, or our Y axis in this case, is going to move a certain number of units. Now to show you just how nonlinear the follower axis can get, we're going to use a couple different values for the, the follower axis cam table. So again, we'll do at zero, it moves zero. At 10 linear units, we move 10 degrees. At 20, you know, we'll do it moves 12 degrees. Then 50, then 95, and then 360. So those are very nonlinear units as far as how often it moves. And so we should see at zero millimeters, the y-axis should move zero degrees. At 10, it should move 10 degrees. 20 millimeters, we should see 12 degrees, 30, 50 degrees, 40 millimeters, 95. And finally, at 50 millimeters, we should see the rotary axis at 360. Now, because we did drop our number of points from 7 to 6, I'm going to update this camming table points down to 6. Now, let's quickly touch on what each of the next settings indicates and stands for. So the first is going to be our table number. The camming table configuration that we have in Automation 1, you can have up to 100 different camming tables. So this table number is specifically going to be telling us that we're going to be taking these array points and uploading them to cam table number zero. For our units, this specifies which units we plan on using for the leader and follower axes. So are we going to be using encoder counts? Are we going to be using primary units or secondary units? In this case, we're just going to keep what the example has and use primary units. Afterwards, we have the interpolation mode. The interpolation mode, again, will change what goes on between each of these points. So what kind of motion is actually interpolated between say our 10 and our 20 millimeters? How is the follower axis going to respond? So for that, we're going to be using cubic, which is going to implement a third order splining for a little more of a, an accurate representation of what it's doing. We do also have the ability simply to do a linear interpolation from point to point as well. So you could make it much simpler and do linear Cubic is obviously going to give you a little more of an accurate movement, but for our purposes and in our example, I don't think accuracy is a huge concern for us right now. So we'll just keep what the help file example has and keep it at cubic. Next is the wrap mode. So this changes what happens when we run out of points in the table. Do we want to wrap around back to the beginning of the cam table values for the follower axis? or do we simply want to just end it there? So again, I don't know if we're gonna see a huge difference in our example, but we're going to keep it as wrap for the example program. Next is going to be actually loading the cam table from our array that we just specified into table number zero. So to do that, we actually use this camming load table from array command. We have that table number we have the leader values from our cam table. We have the follower values. We have the number of points in the cam table. We have our units mode. We have our cubic interpolation mode and our wrap mode. So this final value here is your offset. So do you want to offset your table, yes or no? And if so, by how much? Well, we don't want to actually offset any of the values in our table, so we're just going to put this as an offset of zero. Next, we'll just continue through. We enable and we home. 
then we go to set up a couple more parameters for actually turning camming on. So we have our camming source and our camming output. Our camming source specifies which signal per se we're actually tracking from our leader axis. So are we going to be tracking input commands from somewhere else? Are we going to be tracking the feedback or are we going to be tracking the command? So when we tell the leader axis to move 10 millimeters, how should we interpret that? And what should we actually send? How are we actually seeing that in our cam table? So we're going to obviously be using position command just to make things simple to track, okay, we're telling it to do this, move to this point. The camming output allows us to specify, okay, are we doing velocity? Are we, instead of tracking the position, are we doing the velocity? As mentioned earlier, camming allows you to change both the position or velocity of the follower axis. Well, for this, we're simply going to be doing position. And for that, what kind of position? Is it going to be a relative position or is it going to be absolute? And we're going to be doing absolute. Then we move on to actually enabling the camming. So we specify our follower axis, our leader axis, again, which table number it is, our source as the position command, and then our output as absolute position output to the follower axis. Now for our example, what we're actually going to do is comment out these three lines. So ordinarily, what these three lines do is this is where your movement happens. And then after that movement occurs, you disable camming and you release the camming table from control. Just to give you a better idea of what we're seeing though, what we're gonna do is just comment those out so that we can jog the axis manually and not try and worry about whether or not we're seeing the, the camming actually happen. So we'll just end up using the jogging commands. We'll set up our speeds and our distances and we will move X axis to each of those specified points and you should see a corresponding movement on the Y axis in degrees. All right, so first let's go ahead and make sure that we actually have our jog distance settings set correctly. So we have the jog mode set to distance, the speed set to 10 millimeters per second, and the jog distance set to 10 so that each time we move forward, it will move to each of those 10 millimeter distances. All right, that should conclude how we set everything up. Let's go ahead and run this and show you what happens. All right, so now we've homed and now we have enabled camming. So as we move X axis to 10 millimeters without touching Y axis, we see that it does move to 10. As we move X to 20, Y moves to 12 degrees. 30 millimeters results in 50. 40 millimeters results in 95. And 50 millimeters results in 360. And again, since this is a table, we can go back and forth. We could even go to points in between since the interpolation will handle that. But hopefully this does show you how to set up camming based on the example program we have. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to gearing. All right, now, so for our gearing example, because gearing is so much more simpler, what we're actually gonna do is just start from scratch. So there is not actually, at the present moment, there's no gearing motion example program in the help file, but all you need are three simple commands, so it's not too difficult to set up, and I think we could just do that right here, right now. So let's go ahead and create a new program. And we'll set up the enabling and homing. Next, we'll need to set up the relationship between the follower and the leader axis. This is done using the gearing set leader axis command. So we'll set up first, according to our syntax, the follower axis, then the leader axis, and then the source of the gearing. So similar to the camming source, we have to set up where 
the signal itself per se is coming from. And like camming, you know, we have the ability to choose the auxiliary feedback as the gearing source from the leader axis. Do we want to look at the command or the position feedback? So like camming, we're just going to do position feedback. Now, after this, we have to set up the actual ratio between the follower axis and the leader axis. And this is done using the gearing set ratio command. We'll set up our follower axis and then we'll set up our ratio. To give you an example of this first, we're just going to set up a ratio of one. And then finally, we have to turn on and enable gearing. Now, one thing we do have to do is then set up if we wanted to add any kind of additional filtering on top of this gearing. And all that's going to do is just apply a filter to the motion to try and smooth out any sudden changes in velocity of the leader axis to try and prevent that from being sent on to the follower axis. So that is something we'll try and do and we'll set that up. So we will do filtered. And then like the camming example, we are not going to put our motion and then our disabling of the gearing function down below here where sometimes you would actually do that in your program since we're going to be using the jogging buttons below. Now one thing we will have to do first is reset the controller. This is simply because since we were just using the camming example, camming is still enabled since we never actually disabled it and we never released the camming table from control. So resetting is just one way that we can do that. I could have also added some of those camming disable commands at the very top of my program. In this instance, resetting is just simpler. All right, so let's go ahead and save and run this program. All right, like before, we're going to set up our jog distances just to show you how it works. To show you the one to one, we will start off with a jog distance of one at a jog speed of 10. So I move my x axis one millimeter, yet as we can see here, my y axis is moving to 18. Now you might say, well, that's not really a one to one relationship now, is it? I can move to two and see 36, three to 54. So what actually is going on? What's wrong with my ratio? I did actually set it up as a ratio of one, right? Well, you would be right and wrong at the same time. So the ratio is actually happening on the encoder count level. So gearing again operates in terms of encoder counts. When we set up a ratio of one, what we were doing is setting up a ratio of encoder counts being commanded. So when we ended up commanding, one millimeters worth of encoder counts on the x-axis, it sent those exact same encoder counts to the y-axis. Now, simply because of how I have both axes set up, the y-axis happened to move a little farther because it has a higher encoder counts per unit value. To fix that, I can either go through and do a bunch of the math and figure out what ratio actually I want to use for this to make it be one to one, or I can just use a couple programming commands to do that math for me. For that, I'm going to do units to counts again. So again, we're going to be making the ratio between the y-axis in terms of one degree on the y-axis and what that ratio is to one millimeter on the x-axis. So like before, I didn't actually disable gearing. So we'll go ahead and reset. So now this correct ratio here should actually give me what I want. It should actually give me a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of the position feedback that we're actually seeing since now we are appropriately scaling the encoder counts to match up with what my actual feedback commands are going to be. And there, as we can see, as I start to move my x-axis one millimeter, my y-axis moves one degree. 
Now, if I really wanted to, what I could do is put what you would intuitively think as what your ratio is going to be. So say two. So what what is that ratio going to be? We'll multiply that by two so that now my follower axis should move twice the amount in user units that I would expect. And we will go ahead and test that out. So there we go. For every one millimeter I move, I'm actually moving now two degrees in Y. Well, hopefully that should give you a quick idea of what gearing is. It's not all that complicated. Like I said before, it requires three lines of code to enable, and then there's a gearing off command that you could use to disable it all afterwards. That concludes this motion control platform educational video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed learning about the camming and gearing features of Automation 1.